Take numero dos. Hello, folks, and welcome to the uh, uh, gaming news, November the 3rd. And I know the title does not make it look like gaming news, but I am a Cubs fan. I am a Chicago fan. And I will relate this to gaming briefly. Um, so, as you all know, the Cubs won a thriller in game number seven against the Cleveland Indians, eight to seven. In 10 innings, rain delay, got them back together, and I think that's the reason they won. So do Cleveland fans, and they're not happy about that. Um, I love it. I love it, man. The city's going nuts. I'm going to the parade tomorrow, uh, November the 4th. It's going to be a blast. It's legit the party of the century, not the centennial for Wrigley Field. That's not a party of the century. This is the party of the century. And you know, something I was told, sliced bread, this is literally the best thing since sliced bread because sliced bread had not been invented in 1908, uh, which is when the Cubs previously won. It was first sold in 1928. 20 years after the Cubs won the World Series. So... Fun fact for you, sliced bread was not invented the last time the Cubs won the World Series. Um, it was first sold in 1928, advertised as the greatest step forward in the baking industry since bread was wrapped, which led to the popular phrase, the greatest thing since sliced bread. So now this is literally the greatest thing since sliced bread. That is sad. Anyway. Um, now this is going to relate back to gaming in that, um, MLB 17, the show was made available for pre-over, pre-order, um, uh, about a week ago, or, no, actually fairly recently, within the past week, um, MLB 17, the show was made available for pre-order that is how I'm relating it back to gaming um, the Cubs uh, they are obviously probably gonna be one of the best teams in that game um, Ken Griffey graces the cover Ken Griffey Jr. Um, and there's the standard edition for sixty dollars and the MVP edition for seventy dollars. So, get hype! Release March. Releases March. Releases March twenty eighth. Uh, a few days before opening day, so you have that to look forward to. Now, that's my gaming segment. Now we're just gonna talk about the Cubs the whole time, and I will be talking about the election when that happens, and I will find a way to relate that back to gaming. Um, so here's a list of facts. Okay, this was all written in the stars. 108, all of it was written in the stars. Uh, this is written by Snops, or Snopes.com. Uh, slogan is Rumor Has It, written by Dan Ivan. Um, is mostly true. So... I don't know what that means, but I'm just reading up, reading uh, off what they have here verbatim. So check out their article, please. Uh, Snops.com. The article is titled 108, a list of facts connected to the number 108 went viral shortly after the Cubs won their first World Series in 108 years. So. Let's start with there are 108 stitches on a baseball designed by the Cubs' first manager and ace pitcher, A.G. Spaulding. I wonder if that name has anything to do with uh, the ball company, whose Chicago office was originally located at 108 West Madison Street. Left and right field corners at Wrigley Field are 108 meters from home plate. Uh, Ricketts family, who owns the Cubs, has located their main business, TD Ameritrade, on 108th Street in Omaha, Nebraska. The number 108 is a sacred number of yoga, and Cubs pitcher Jake Arrieta does yoga six days a week. That is a stretch. 
Um, Cubs win the World Series in the 1990 J.J. Abrams film, Taking Care of Business, uh, which is 108 uh, minutes long. I, I have to see this. World Series. I have to see a picture of this, bro. Well, it's not gonna show it. Oh well. Um. Yeah, Cubs win the World Series in the 1989 film Back to the Future Part Two, which is 108 minutes long. On 10 8 in 1945, Billy Goat owner Billy Goat Tad. Uh, Tavern owner William uh, Cyanus, who placed a curse on the Cubs for not letting his goat enter Wrigley Field, freaking idiot, sent owner PK Wrigley a telegram stating, Who smells now after a Cubs loss? Um, that was October 8th. Alright, they, they went to, uh, they went to the World Series that year. When was that? that was, I know it was in 45, but it was from when to when. Did they play? Yep. Yep. Uh, that was a World Series game. Wrigley Field was built on land that once housed a church and uh, seminary, and is and 108 is considered a holy number in many religions. The Emil Verbin Society is named after a three-season player with the Cubs, whose batting average in his last season in 1950 with the team was only. Point one zero eight. Hey, the last time the Cubs won a World Series game was 10-8 in 1945. Chirp DePorter, who also Ryan and Sneed, that the distance between the sun and Earth is 108 times the diameter for the sun, and the distance between the moon and Earth is 108 times the diameter of the moon. Holy crap, are you kidding me? <laughs> Sneed's favorite, uh, Joe, Cubs manager... Uh, Joe Madden's mantra for the Cubs for the World Series favorite Cubbies is try not to suck and if you didn't know this already Hindu ma mantras are traditionally repeated 108 times said Deporter who has also been selected who has also selected pop and plain white tees who have recorded 108 songs play Harry Carey's Eatery at the Cubs' early morning rally on October 4th with Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg. Imagine that play ball. Huh. Um, origin. On September 22nd, 2016, the Chicago Sun-Times published a list of supposed facts about the number 108 in anticipation for the Cubs' first World Series victory since 1908. Is 1908 the Cubs' lucky number? Pull up a lawn chair. Sports um, Empresario Grant DePorter Who blew up the, the infamous Barman Ball in 2004 False, that was in 2003 In hopes of killing the legendary Cubs curse They really went after Bartman, man It's not his fault And anyone who hates me for that can come after me Claims the number 108 is the reason the Cubs are destined To win the World Series this year while we can't speak to the curse killing properties of the number 108, we can check to see if the above display claims are accurate. Yeah, the curse is done. It's over. We won. Alright, so 108 stitches. And a baseball is mostly true because there's 108 double stitches, but 216 single stitches. Um, okay, so the 108. Spalding's office is mostly true. Um, he started with an office at 118 Randolph, but they moved to 108 Madison. Um, the home plate to the corners at Wrigley Field are true. TD Ameritrade is true. Uh, 108 is sacred y number in yoga is true. Taking care of business true. Back to the future too true. Billy Goat Curse um, on October 8th. That is unproven. Wrigley Field was built on a land that once housed a church. True. Emil Verbin's batting average 
1950 was 108 true, and before 2016, the last time the Cubs won a World Series game was on October 8th in 1945, which is true. I'm not going to read the subscripts for each one. I will read the sources, however. Um, Hagman William, before there was a Wrigley, there was a seminary, Chicago Tribune, 30th of March, 2014. Selzer Adam, Chronicles of Old Chicago, exploring the history and lore of the Windy City, 1st of July, 2014. Sneed Michael, Sneed, 108 could be the Cubs' magic number this year, Chicago Sun-Times, 22nd September, 2016. <sighs> so I'm not going to read the subscript. I am going to play, however. The out, according to Joe Buck. The final out, according to Joe Buck. And the final out, according to Pat Hughes. This is powerful stuff. I get chills every time I look at this, listen to this. So I'm going to shut off my mic and we're going to listen to this together. And then I will tell you some personal stories of mine. And I'll wrap it up. So enjoy this very powerful final out. As told by Joe Buck. I know you don't like Joe Buck, but enjoy it. Now, the MLB is absolutely loving this exposure. Um, this is most watched World Series game since 19... I'm not sure. It garnered 40 million views, toppling Game 7 in the NBA Finals. Um, Joe Buck even sounds excited. And the way it happened, I wouldn't have it any other way in seven games. Extra innings, rain out, winning by one run. The only uh, the only thing that'd make it even better, which is a small, small, um, small flaw that really wasn't noticeable, was that it's not at Wrigley. But that's okay because there were so many Cubs fans there, as you can hear. Joe Buck even sounds excited. I get chills listening to it. Yeah. Every excuse me, every single time. And now we're gonna listen to Chicago's very own Pat Hughes, the local radio announcer, the man, the myth, the legend. We're gonna discuss how Ron Santos' former broadcasting partner impacted Chicagoans' lives, and how he impacted their lives too, and the story of how they first met. Um, enjoy this one. This is even more powerful. So you may think, oh, he doesn't sound that excited there. Um, that's because he's in shock, just like everyone else, especially Cleveland fans. Um, everyone, we're all in shock, man. We're all in shock. Um, now, Pat Hughes and Ron Santo, they broadcasted together for many, many years um, on WGN, then on WBBM, and now... 670 the score um they actually met when ron santo or excuse me when pat hughes was a kid he lived in san francisco and he'd go to the games and one day the cubs were in town with ron santo on the team so pat hughes goes into the dugout and ron santo he gets to meet ron santo and that's just so weird that about 40 years later they're they're partners in crime, and they're best friends, and it is, it's wonderful. 
It's wonderful to watch, or to listen to, and to watch. So, um, now I'll talk about my personal story. I'll just talk about how I felt, how my family felt. I'm trying not to make this video too long. I'll tell you about my favorite patios, run sand a moment, and I'll wrap it up. So, I was freaking out in the ninth inning when they tied it up. I was very angry, and I was freaking out in the 10th inning when they scored that run, and almost, if, um, whoever was up to bat, if he hit a home run, then the Indians would have won the, the World Series, but he didn't, and the Cubs win the World Series, and the curse is over. Now my family and I, we all went ballistic, because obviously... It's, this is the first time for me, and this is the first time for my parents. It's the first time for nearly everybody. Um, and it's, it's, the drought's over. And now I'll be able to tell my kids I witnessed the Cubs win a World Series. When, uh, they're like, wow, that was so long ago. That was such a drought. I'll be like, I know, son. I know. Or daughter, whatever. Whatever I have, you know. Um, now, my favorite call was this one game in 2008, I believe, where Cubs are down 10 nothing in the bottom of the ninth. You know, we're on our way home from the city. We live in the suburbs, so we're driving home from the city, and we're just having out for background noise because, you know, they're going to lose. It's the bo uh, bottom of the ninth, 10 nothing. It's just you get your three outs and go. Well, they score a free run, so cool. Uh, too little, too late. Then they score some more runs. Eventually it's 10 to 7, and the fans are back in this thing. Ron Santo is calling it with Pat Hughes, and... Ron Santo, um, he was very passionate about the Cubs, so he obviously loved the Cubs, and he went nuts for them. So he was hoping they'd still win, but we still considered it a loss. You know, old Cubs fashion, they'll probably lose. Um, nope. It's 10-9, to 9, and now the fans are very much in it. And I remember exactly the score. And I remember who hit the home run. Well, actually, I don't. But I believe it was Alfonso Soriano hits a two-run homer to left field. A walk-off to win the game 11-10. to And Ron Santo is going ballistic. And Pat Hughes is going like, Cubs win! Cubs win! And we're just in shock that they managed to come back like this. And that that's by far my, besides this game, Game 7 of the World Series, that was by far my favorite Cubs game that I've witnessed. Um, and maybe besides the pennant, when they won the pennant at Wrigley. This was probably my favorite Cubs game to witness, just because of Ron Santo. And I'll actually play a clip of... Uh, of him going nuts. It's not the same game, but it is against the Rockies. It's a different game against the Rockies. But just enjoy this and just listen to the crowd, man. One and oh on Girardi. Four four tie in the ninth. And the pitch. Girardi left yeah. on the left hand. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Look around third. He's gonna try to score. The throw by Shepard. Oh. Oh. He gets oh. back.
What a game. Uh, now, that was in 01, so I didn't witness that shortly before 9-11 in August. And I'll actually look up how they did that season. I believe they did not make the playoffs. Um, yeah, they finished third with a record of... Yeah, they did not make the playoffs. The Astros and Cardinals, I remember when the Astros were in our division. They're now... American League, but the Astros, they won the division. Um, I have another clip for you. It's quick 12 seconds. It's another clip of Ron Santo saying, oh no. You can see how passionate he was, how much he loved the Cubs, and one more. Bottom of the 11th, Cubs at first and second, but the only man that counts is DeRosa, leading at second base. And the 2-0 from Wilson. Johnson, it's a ground ball, right side, base hit, right field. Come on, DeRosa heading home, the throw by Burris to the plate, the fly, he scores! Oh, man, I'm just reminiscing about uh, the Cubs, man, and Ron Santo. So you see how much how how much he affected the game of baseball and the Cubs. And I'll show you the TV clip or let you listen to that of um. Hold on. TV clip that the game that Ron Santo called where he's like, oh no, where the guy slept, so enjoy. So it's 4-4, four, four, man on second and third. The guy hits a single out to left field, I'll visualize it for you. Guy's rounding third. He's going to win the game. He slips. So he's got to go back to third. And so there's a, the guy's in a pickle in between first and second. There's one out. So that guy gets an out. And while second baseman, well, I'll just let you finish. So they won. Um, you can hear the fans go nuts, and that's just the best part of Chicago, Chicago baseball, the devotion, especially with the Cubs. Like, Sox, they're doing not so good right now, and I don't see that many people go to the games, but even when the Cubs were not good, there were, there were people there, tons of people. And it was just a great, great experience, great way to spend your time in Chicago going to Cubs game in the middle of the summer. And now you might you might see him win. So um that's all I have for you. I hope to see more World Series championships in the future. Go get MLB seventeen the show if you're a baseball fan. Ron Santo rest in peace. And finally, go Cubs go. Thank you. And subscribe.